Hey everybody and welcome to another episode from wholesingersflyshop.com bringing you another tying video this week and uh, I haven't brought a stonefly to you in a good long time so I figured I'd throw out a stonefly pattern and it's one that I really like it's called the hot wired wiggler um, I have a lot of guys have me do custom orders for wiggled wiggle stones wiggle nymphs kind of patterns and uh, I thought I'd share this one with you I really like um, cool pattern really realistic looking and uh, uses livey legs you know a lot of you guys like the livey legs also so I figured I'd throw that in there too and uh, let's quit talking and get into tying it I'm going to show it to you in brown and then yellow and uh, here's the picture of the fly and then the material is to tie it Okay, here you see the hot wired wiggler in the vise. Um, this one's in the brown color. Um, using golden stone bias, wine, and gold brassy wire for the abdomen. And for the thorax, I'm using some SLF pattern blends red squirrel nymph thorax with brown legs, of course. So let's get into tying the golden version and uh, we'll get started on it here. For a hook, for the tail section of it, I'm using a Daiichi 1560, tying this in a size 14 for this one. And I'm going to use some cream thread. I'm tying a yellow. You could use yellow thread if you want here. The cream is nice. I'm just going to start my thread, wrap it back, and I'm going to take this butt section of thread to kind of wrap up against and make a little bit of a ball back here. Just a small ball. It doesn't need to be real big. Just enough to splay my bias out so that's good cut that off and for bias I'm just using some yellow goose bias and just put them on there get the length of bias that you want there for the tail and wrap it back to that ball and then put one on the other side You can do them both at the same time if you want. I just tend to do it one at a time, just the way I like to do it. And there you go, they splay out nice, real nice with that little ball of thread back there. And then we're going to wrap them the rest of the way down. Next thing I'm going to do is put on two pieces of wire. Uh, I'm using a piece of brassy gold and black small UTC ultra wire. The black wire is like the black is painted on so it's a little bit thicker than regular brassy so I drop down to small to get the same size and I like to tie it on the side closest to me you can tie it on top bottom whatever just get it tied on there and then cover it up with thread and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up just a little bit of thread because I want it to taper forward some but notice I'm not getting too close to that eye because I want room to wrap off so make like a little bit of a cigar taper there, come up to the eye and wrap it off. Then we're just going to take and make nice side by side wraps and wrap this all the way up. If you get apart a little bit, just take your thumb, push it back together. Make it nice and neat there. And then just wrap it right up to that eye and tie it off. So I'll make two or three wraps, then I'll let go of the wire and finish it off. And then just helicopter these off. Now I do like to protect that just a little bit with some solar res bone dry just to keep my wraps from unwinding my you know I only put one whip finish on there I'll put a little bit of glue just to hold everything in place hit with light and there's our tail section we're gonna set that aside now if I'm tying I'm gonna tie a whole bunch of those I'm gonna if I'm tying a dozen of them 
I'll tie a dozen tails and then I'll bump onto this butt. Next up for a hook, I'm using a 1120. This is a wide gap scud hook from Daiichi. I'm using a 2.8 copper tungsten bead, um, 2530, anywhere in that range. I would go like 2830 for this size hook. And then I'm using uh, about 10 wraps of 0.015 lead on here. And then I'm gonna come back in with my cream colored thread and just wrap that lead down into place. Now I'm gonna attach that tail section on here. And to do that, I'm gonna use some eight pound test mono. And this is chameleon. This is what I use for leaders. I just use that to tie it on here. You can use regular fishing line, whatever. And I'm, you see how I'm starting it right behind the lead? I started my wraps behind the lead and I'm gonna tuck that back, tuck that fishing line back over and that'll lock it in place, okay? So now I got the rest of the fishing line on here. I'm gonna come back in with my tail that I just made. Put it, put the line up through the hook eye so it lays down the same, the hook direction. For me, I like to just pop it down in my vise section there, the slit of my vise so it doesn't hook me later. And then I'm going to bring my line back over the top again and wrap it back a little bit around the bend of the hook. And there we go. And again, I'm going to wrap just, this time I'm going to go just a little bit up on the lead, which will help cause a little bit of a nice taper to it there. So wrap it back over to lock it into place and cut your tag off. Now, we're gonna start building the wing case on this before we put the legs on. So for the wing case, I'm using a piece of large uh, tinsel. This is the pearl tinsel, mylar tinsel. And I'm just gonna wrap that on and wrap it back to where I stopped my thread before. And then we're gonna use a piece of turkey tail. Now there's two sides to the turkey tail. This you can see is a real doll side, which is the top side of the turkey tail. The bottom side is a little bit shinier. So I want to tie a shiny side up so that doll natural look is the side that shows. So you're gonna tie bottom side up so when you flip it over, the top side is showing. You're gonna tie that on and wrap that back there to where we stopped again. And now we're gonna put on our live legs. For live legs, I'm using a size medium. These are yellow to match the golden stone look here. These are yellow ones, size mediums, and I'm gonna cut these tags off. Okay, there I got the tags cut off. You can see I left very little of it on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up on top. And I'm gonna set it Right in about the middle, you can see how I have a little bit of gap here between when I lay this down between the end of the legs and the beads. I want to retain that. So I'm just going to tie it down up on top, get it where I want it that way. And then I'll cross over the middle legs to get them in place. I'm going to do this all kind of lightly. So I get it where I want it. And once I get it where I want it, then I'm going to crank down on it a little bit more to keep everything in place. So, you can see there I did some crisscross patterns, got that locked out, down in place, everything where I want it. Next thing we're gonna put on is the dubbing. For the dubbing on this one, I'm gonna use the SLF Pattern Blends. This is the Red Squirrel Nymph Abdomen, the orangish color, so it's gonna make a nice golden stone. And it's going to give some contrast between that dark back that I'm putting on it. So just put a nice thin noodle on there. And then make wraps in between those legs. Oops. About out here. So I'm going to tighten this back up a little bit. I add a little bit more because I need some more. I don't want to go thick here. I just want to cover that abdomen up. Get back in behind the legs and then go over top of them. Crisscross it 
on the way back up. That's the way I do them. I tend to go in between them and then on my way back up, I'll crisscross them. So now I'm gonna look underneath here, make sure I got everything covered, which I do, you can see there. The tops are not gonna matter so much because it's gonna get covered up. You just wanna make sure you have the bottom of the, app, of the thorax here covered up. Now we're gonna take our wing case and pull our wing case over. Oh, when I cut this off, I want it to be about the size of my hook gap. So the distance between the body and my hook, that's the width of my wing case that I want to cut off the turkey tail fiber. Tie that in right behind the bead. Then bring my flash back up over top. Get about two or three good wraps in there. I like to pop it back over and then do my wet finish. And I like to do like two little three wrap, three wrap whip finishes. I don't want to build up a big collar there. And then I'm going to make a wing case, a hard wing case out of some solar res medium viscosity. You could use flex here. You could use thick. I just prefer the medium viscosity. It works the best for me. So once I get that on there nice and smooth, leveled, hit it with my light, harden it up, and we're all done. And there you see the golden stone version, all tied up and finished. Alright guys, hope you liked that video. It's really not that hard. It's really two very simple flies tied together to make one fly. Um, practice with it. Practice with those livey legs, getting them to stay on top of the hook. It takes a little bit if you're first new to tying with them. Do it lightly and then tie it down as you go and it'll it'll hold on top if you do it lightly to start with. Uh, a lot of you guys like fishing the livey legs. I don't fish them that much, but I know you guys do, so I share them with you. And uh, they catch fish. I'm not gonna lie, they do catch fish. And this one's a nice realistic version here. So have fun, mess around with it. Definitely change the color. You can change the size on it, tie it smaller and bigger too. But uh, definitely change the color. Um, like I showed you a brown one and a golden stone. Those are the two that I'm gonna mess with the most. But who knows, maybe like a pink and a purple would work for steelhead. You know, steelhead just love those flashy colors. So give that a try. Try some purple legs on there or even the pink legs with a purple tail. Mess around and have fun. When you can experiment, experiment with your tying and then go out and catch something on it, it gives you that sense of satisfaction. That that's what this is all about. You know, learning, learning as you go, building on your steps and getting better as you go. So have fun tying guys. If you need any of the materials to tie these or if you want me to tie some for you, reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. I can do custom orders all the time. That's what I do for a living. So uh, I can tie some flies for you, or if you need any of the materials, head over to wholesingersflyshop.com, and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you out over there. So thanks for watching, everybody. Until next week when I bring you another tying video, I'm Sean Holsinger.